Hello, everybody. Um, I'm doing research on, uh, I'm a PhD student doing research on shared decision making in care networks of people with dementia. And in this talk, I will uh, share with you our results about the decisions in the lives of care networks of people with dementia. Um, because I think we all know that people with dementia and their, and their caregivers experience a lot of changes over time. Um, and often these changes call for decisions. So it's kind of a decision trajectory. Uh, but it's a very uncertain one. Um, and this picture, well, you may not relate it immediately to dementia, but it refers to a metaphor um, that one of the respondents in a focus group that we had for another part of our study uh, told us. Um, it was a focus group on uh, competencies for case managers facilitating shared decision making. And he said, well, it's like skiing down a hill. You know you're going down, but you don't know how fast you're going down and which um, flags you're going to pass. And it would be really helpful to know a bit more about that. Um, and there's also research about the perspectives of people with dementia, about their living with the dementia, Princess Stamen. Uh, and she has found out that people, um, because of this uncertainty about what will happen, have trouble with planning ahead for decisions to be made. Another metaphor, I think, is, is this picture of uh, which, which <laughs> I want to uh, say, well, it's, it's about the person with dementia, but also about the caregiver. So decisions relate to both of them. And there may be some conflict of interest also. So, our research question for this part of our study uh, was what decisions are made and when over the course of time in care networks of people with dementia. And this is a part of a longitudinal multi-perspective study uh, in which we had 20, 285 interviews with 113 respondents. Uh, they belong to 23 care ne networks, and the care networks involved the person with dementia, two informal caregivers, and two formal caregivers. And we interviewed them with six-month intervals for three times. We asked them about what had changed um, the last uh, time. Um, and from that we were able to find out with the, which decisions were made because if you just simply ask what decisions did you make, uh, a lot of uh, the decisions that are made are, are not really experienced as a decision or are maybe made implicitly. So therefore we started with asking about changes. Uh, we asked for reasons for decisions and the cause of the decision making. Uh, our analysis was multi-layered. We started with content analysis to find out which decisions were made. Uh, for each of our care networks, we uh, made a timeline consisting of uh, the decisions made in that care network in a chronological order. And we used constant comparison to find patterns in content and sequence of decisions. So now for the results. I start with the decisions made, and we found four themes. Oh. Yeah. The first is about managing daily life. So this involves self-care. Um, well, here you see an example of it. Structuring the day, uh, mobility, and also handling finances. The next theme is about arranging care and support. And this involves both support for the person with dementia, like home care or daycare, things like that, but also supporting the informal caregiver, like respite care. Okay. Oh, now they're both there. Well, <laughs> I'll start with living in the community, uh, which involves the social network 
of the person with dementia, uh, for instance, keeping up with uh, contacts of the person with dementia, and also living arrangements, so living in the community or in a sheltered home, care home. And the last theme is about representat representation of the person with dementia, which is about the decision-making roles of the different care network members uh, and about advanced decisions. So when looking at the timelines of the care networks that we made, uh, we saw some patterns in the sequence of decisions. Uh, and there were similarities and differences between people with dementia living alone and those living together with their informal caregiver, often the spouse. Um, so I will take you through some key events uh, with related decisions that we saw. So the first is about safety concerns that are actually there before the diagnosis has been set. And we especially saw this in care networks of people with dementia living alone. And related decisions uh, involve handling finances, uh, going out alone, or being at home alone, uh, and taking medication, medication. So lots of decisions made before the diagnosis set. Then the mo moment of the diagnosis, this is seen in both uh, people with dementia uh, living alone and together, of course. Uh, and related decisions involve, um, for instance, uh, decisions about taking Alzheimer medication, uh, decisions about driving, uh, car driving, um, also decisions about involving uh, children or not in those living with their spouse. So also a key event with lots of decisions to be made. Then and this somehow <laughs> connects to uh, the last speaker, uh, we saw, especially in care networks of people with dementia living together with their informal caregiver, uh, the key event of inactivity of the person with dementia. And the related decisions reflect, I think, also another aspect of this, uh, um, yeah, what has been discussed yet, um, also, uh, the burden for the caregiver, because related decisions involve daycare, but also home care um, for the person with dementia. Then in both people with dementia living alone and those living with their caregiver, we see safety incidents at home coming up. And related decisions involve going out alone, being at home alone, um, uh, things like cooking uh, or um, or uh, choosing for meal service, for instance, and also uh, uh, issues of yeah, just activities of daily living. Then there were three key events, which kind of are uh, a, a sort of prelude to a nursing home admission. And um, well, 24-hour monitoring becoming necessary. This is. We see this in both people with dementia living alone and those living with a caregiver. Um, related decisions involve especially going out alone and being home alone. Uh, in people with dementia living alone especially, we saw hospitalization, which often had to do with falls in, in, the, ho in the home um, or other yeah, safety issues, related to safety issues. Uh, and in care networks of people with dementia living with a caregiver, we also saw over overburdening of the caregiver with related decisions, <coughs> extending home care, uh, extending daycare, uh, and arranging respite care, for instance. And in all these three uh, key events, uh, we also saw the decision of registering for a nursing home. So the next key event is the moment of nursing home admission. And related decisions involve um, setting an activity schedule, uh, decorating the room, um, uh, 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 making decisions about uh, activities of daily living, uh, and also the decision of whether or not a person with dementia can go out 
from the institution alone or from the board. In some care networks of people with dementia, both those living alone or those living with their spouse before nursing home admission, we see, we see some adjustment issues happening and related decisions involve uh, psychologist care uh, and sometimes uh, changing uh, between groups within a ward or to another ward. And sometimes there's also the decision about whether or not to take back home the person with dementia. And then another key event which can happen not in every care network but is about switching wards. Sometimes it has to do with organizational issues, a ward being renovated or closed and then a person with dementia has to move to another ward. Um, and sometimes this has to do with um, the progressive uh, disease. So the person with dementia doesn't really fit in with the group uh, in the care or, nurse, or in the nursing home. Uh, related decisions involve active, setting an, an activity schedule, making decisions about activities of daily living, um, and also a visitor schedule often. So it, it looks like a really linear um, um, uh, picture, of course. It's not really that lim lim uh, linear uh, as it is in, in, in every care network. So, and not every care network will uh, meet all these key events. Uh, but well. We've got two minutes for discussion, please. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my conclusion. People with dementia make a range of decisions over time, including managing daily life, arranging care, community living, and legal representation. And we think that insight into the content and sequence of decisions may help in preparing for decisions that lie ahead. And we see that content and sequence of decision differs to some extent between uh, those living alone and those living with their caregiver. So that was it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm